Hello all, welcome to EC Electronics. In this video, we are going to crack the TCS aptitude exam. That is, we are going to solve certain questions which keeps the level of TCS aptitude exams. Okay, or the type of questions which has been asked in the TCS aptitude. So it always, uh, as a person who have uh, given the exam of TCS, that is the aptitude exam of TCS, I think that TCS always keeps a standard. Okay, so uh, let's try to do some problems. Isha's father was 34 years of age when she was born. Her younger brother Shashank now 13. Okay, so this thing you have to keep in mind. Now 13 is very proud that he is tall as her, even though he is 3 years younger than her. Isha's mother, who is shorter than Isha, was only 29 when Shashank was born. What is the sum of ages of Isha's parents now. So not a very complicated question but it is a little bit twisted because they have introduced the ages here and also they have some uh, in some sentences they have told the length about the length also that is he is taller than her Isha's mother is shorter than Isha so these the length thing that is the tall short thing we don't have to keep in mind so we have to completely ignore the uh, the thing you have to identify or understand is that it is just to twist your mind. Okay. So, whenever you are doing an aptitude question, always try to do it in minimum number of steps. So, uh, so it is, uh, some things are given here. So, we need to first find out the age of Isha and Shashank. Then we have to find out the ages of Isha's parents that is mom and dad. Then we have to take this up. Okay. So, from the question itself, it is directly given that Shashank is now 13. So, the age of Shashank is, Shashank's age is 13. Okay. And also, it is given that he is 3 years younger than Isha means Isha's age is, is 3 plus 13. That is 13 plus 3, which is equal to 16 years. Okay. Now, another thing we are going to do is we are going to find the Isha's mother's age. How to find out? So, Isha's mother is shorter than Isha because that you have to ignore and was only 29 when Shashank was born. So, when Shashank was born, at that time Isha's mother is 29 years. So, what will be Isha's mother's current age? So, it is nothing but 29 plus Shashank's current age. That is, now I am going to find age of mom. That is, 29 plus Shashank's current age is 13, which is nothing but 42. So, this is mom's current age. Now, we have to find Isha's father's current age. Okay. So, the first statement or the first sentence is Isha's father was 34 years of age when she was born. So, from this sentence, father's age is, so age of father equal to 34 plus. So, what is Isha's current age, it is 16. So, it will give you 34 plus 16 is 50. Correct. So, we got current age of mom and dad of Isha. So, what is the sum of their age? It is nothing but 42 plus 50. So, 42 plus 50 equal to 92. So, this is the answer for this question. So, while answering this question, when you are reading the question itself, try to uh, either if it is an online exam, uh, try to keep these things in mind or if it is a written exam, so generally these exams are online. So, whenever you are reading this question, keep these things in mind. Okay. And while uh, completing the question reading, you can identify that you only need to keep the age thing in mind. You can ignore the length or the tall short thing. So, uh, try to uh, avoid those things from your mind. Only keep the required things or the parameters or the data in mind and then do the calculation in minimum number of steps. Okay, so the answer for this question is option A, just 92. The question is, in a test with 26 questions, 5 points were deducted for each wrong answer and 8 points added for each correctly answered. How many questions were answered correctly if the score is 0? So, we are uh, assuming here that all the questions were answered. So, there are how many number of questions? There are total 26 number of questions. So, uh, we can uh, say that, say this number of correctly answered 
and why wrongly answered. So we can write x plus y equal to 26. Right. So if all the questions are answered then we can write x plus y is 26. Also another thing is given that the mark obtained is 0. Right. So so if x is the correctly answered then 8 points are added for each correctly answered that is 8 into x plus 5 points are deducted means minus 5 for each wrongly answered means minus 5 into y equal to 0. So these are the two equations that is equation number 1 and equation number 2. So if you solve these two equations you will get the value of x and y. Okay, what we will do is we will multiply this with 8 or we will multiply this with 5. Okay, so 5x minus 5, sorry, plus 5y equal to 26 into 5. Now, um, we will add the second equation, that is equation number 2 with this equation, that is equation number 3. So 8x minus 5y equal to 0. So when you add this, this y terms get cancelled. So 8 plus 5 is 13. That is 13x equal to 26 into 5. 13, 2s are 26. So we get x equal to 2 into 5. That is 10. So we got x is 10. So the question is, how many questions are correctly answered? So x denote the number of correctly answered question so x is nothing but 10 so we not we need not find y because the answer is already obtained okay so the correct answer from the option is option b so what we have done here is we have formed two equations one from this statement that is with 26 number of questions means if all the questions we are just assuming that all the questions are answered then some questions will be correct some questions will be wrong okay so anyway the sum of the correct questions and wrong questions is 26 because there is total 26 questions. Okay, so that is your first equation. That is equation number one. Now, your second equation is from the points. That is five points is deducted for each wrong answer. Eight points is added for each correct answer means you can write 8x minus 5y will give you. Here it is given that. The score obtained is 0. So it is equal to 0. So try to solve these two equations. Then simply you can get the number of correct answers. So here the answer is 10. A sum of rupees 2387 is divided into three parts. In such a way that one fifth of the first part, half, one half of the second part and fourth one, that is one fourth of the third part is equal. Find the sum of five times the first part 3 times the second part and 4 times the third part. Okay, so we will try to assume here that the portions are x, y and z. So the sum, that is this sum is divided into x, y and z portions. Now we will try to move on to the uh, relations. That is one fifth of the first part, that is 1 by 5x. Now, one half of the second part is 1 by 2y and fourth one of that is one fourth of the z are equal. So, we can write like this 1 by 5x equal to 1 by 2y equal to 1 by 4z. So, let this be equal to say r. Okay. So, now we will try to find or uh, try to form relations of x, y and z in terms of r. So, you can write x equal to 5r. Now, so x equal to 5r, y equal to cross multiply that is 2r and z equal to 1 by 4 z equal to r means z equal to 4r. Okay, so what is this sum equal to? This sum is equal to that is x plus y plus z is equal to 2, 3, 8, 7, right? Okay, so you can write x plus y plus z equal to 2387. So you can write 5r plus 2r plus 4r equal to 2387. Now you will get 
5 plus 4 is 9, 9 plus 2 is 11. So 11 R equal to 2387. So R equal to 2387 by 11. So if you sort this, you will get 270. So now you have the value of R. Now we have to now find the sum of 5 times the first part, 3 times the second part and 4 times the third part. Anyway, we have values. Now we can find a uh, value of x, y, z, right? By substituting the value of r here, that is 5r, 2r and 4r. So you can get the value of x, y and z. So you can get the 5 times the first part, 3 times the second part and 4 times the third part. Okay. So first I will remove this. So we need to find 5 times the first part. So that is equal to 5 into 5r that is 5 into 270 plus now 3 times the second part that is 3 into second part is y that is 2r 2 into 270 right plus 4 times the third part that is 4 into here third part is z so 4 into r is 270 right so 217 so this is your so this is your equation. So this solution is your answer. And you will get an answer of 10199. So if you solve this, you will get 10199. And the correct answer here is option D. So the options given are A9982, B7812, C9114, D10199. So your correct answer is option D. A bus service from Rajaji Industry Park runs at regular intervals intervals it is now 3 12 pm and it has arrived one minute ago so you need to keep these things in mind 3 12 pm and the bus has arrived one minute ago but was two minutes late so but the bus was two minutes late the next bus is due at 3 18 pm so when is the next bus due Okay, so next to next bus, that is the next bus is 3.18 at 3.18. So when is the next bus after that? So the options given are option A, 3.27 p.m., B, 3.29 p.m., option C, 3.24 p.m., option D, 3.25 p.m. So in order to keep, uh, in order to answer this question, so first you are given that 3.12, the, the, now the time is 3.12 p.m., right? And the bus has arrived one minute ago means the bus arrived at 3.11 p.m. So the bus arrived at 3.11 p.m. Now what is the actual time of the bus? So it is given that even though the bus arrived one minute ago but was two minutes late. So it was two minutes late. So the actual timing is minus two minutes. So the bus arrived at 3.11 but it was two minutes late. So the actual bus time equal to 3.11 p.m. minus 2 minutes that is 3.09 p.m. That is the bus has to arrive that is it has to be arrived at 3.09 p.m. Okay so this is the actual timing of the bus. And the next bus is at 3.18 p.m. means what is the time interval of the bus? That is the time interval of bus is the next due minus actual timing equal to next due is 3.18 p.m. minus 3 not 9 p.m. that is equal to not 9 minutes. That is not 9 is the time interval. That is this is actually obtained from the next due minus the actual timing that is the bus is coming at every 9 minutes. Okay. Point not 9. Okay. Now, it is given that the bus is due at 3.18 p.m. And we have to find when is the next bus due. That is, when is the next bus coming after the 3.18 p.m. bus. So, we have to add not point not 0.9 with 3.18. That is, 3.18 plus point not 0.9. That is equal to 3. 2 7 pm is the next view of the bus. Okay, so the correct answer here is option A, which is 327 pm. 
Okay, so in order to answer this question, first we have to keep in mind that the bus, uh, that is the current timing is 3.12 p.m. The bus has arrived one minute ago, that is at 3.11, but it is two minutes late means the actual timing is 3.9. Also, we have given the next due time. So that is actually the correct timing. Okay, so this, the next due time is 3.18. So we can find out the time interval and thus from this time interval, we can find or predict that the bus will arrive next when, that is, when is the next best due. So we will get the value as 3.27 p.m. So in this video, we have discussed certain aptitude questions which has been asked in TCS exam. That is a type of questions which has been asked in TCS aptitude exams. I really hope this will be helpful for all the TCS aspirants or the people who are trying to crack the IT company aptitude exams. Okay, so we'll be seeing in the part two of this video. So please do share this video with the, all your friends who is preparing for exams or who is trying to clear such exams and also with your family and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.